inches closer by the day. People are already trying to cross out stuff on their lists. This is great news for shops in Tunkhannock that took part in Small Business Saturday. To stay in business today, to go against the big box stores, and unless we have those loyal customers coming out and supporting us, we won't be here. And so we appreciate it. The business has sat on Tioga Street for more than 20 years. The store has plenty of different home decorations, holiday gifts, and homemade chocolate. For small businesses we spoke to, providing customer care is essential in separating them from big box stores. We try to have a wide variety of things that, you know, people looking for gifts. Um, there's going to be something in this store that you're going to want to find and, and hopefully will find. Nikki Shake was one of the customers able to find exactly what she and her family wanted. Chocolate. Nikki Shake says the responsibility of keeping small businesses open rests on the customer. If we don't take care of our small local businesses, then we're not even going to have a town in existence here. We, we thrive on what we can do here, so we need them. They're an asset to our community. Across the street from Paradise Gifts is Jilly Jen, Gifts and Consignment. Owner Heather Veo says the store has been here since January, making this her first small business Saturday. It's been great. A lot of families coming in. I have coffee and refreshments and discounts and crafts for the kids, and they've all been in a great, great mood, great spirit. I have Christmas music playing, so everybody's just coming out and shopping local. It's awesome. Tunkanic will be holding a Christmas in our hometown next week, highlighting small businesses. Alan Vickers, Newswatch 16, Wyoming County. The city of Carbondale welcomed the holiday season this evening with a parade. The annual downtown Carbondale lighted Christmas parade made its way down Main Street. There were lots of homemade floats and, of course, some candy. After the parade wrapped up, there was a tree lighting in front of City Hall here in Lackawanna County. It was all aboard the Holiday Express today in Scranton. This train pulled out of the station at the Steamtown National Historic Site packed with about 200 eager passengers, including some kids getting their first taste of the holiday season. About 1,000 tickets were sold for the round trip between Scranton and Moscow. Holiday shoppers helped the American Red Cross at an event in Luzerne County today. It was day one of the two-day American Red Cross craft fair inside the Kingston Armory. The fair supports small businesses, but an entrance fee goes to the Red Cross, which has been busy with aid efforts in Texas, Florida and Puerto Rico following a series of hurricanes. The American Red Cross chapter here in northeastern PA is also busy with relief locally. We're still responding to house fires here in northeast PA every single day. We had four uh, just on Wednesday alone in Luzerne County. So this money that's raised at a, an event like this helps to support those families who lost everything. The craft show continues Sunday. Doors open at 10 here in Luzerne County. Temperatures dropping now, but how chilly will it get? Scott Stucio is in the backyard with a first look at the forecast. Hi, Scott. Hello, Stacey. Yes, indeed. It is getting chillier, but very slowly, and it has dried up a little bit. Still a little bit of dampness on parts of the pavement here. We did have four hundredths of an inch of rain come through here a little while ago. And as we take a look at the satellite and radar picture, most of this is over with what came through earlier. You can see that batch of green that worked its way from the northern tier through the Wyoming Valley and across the uh, eastern parts of Pike and Monroe County is now going into New Jersey. Off to the northwest, we are starting to see enough cold air to change that rain over to some flurries and some snow showers, and that's going to be the case along with the increasing winds. Not bad here now, but it's starting to pick up in the western half of the state, 15 to 20 miles per hour sustained. That's what we're going to see through the uh, early morning hours and into the day on Sunday. It's going to turn more windy. The temperatures are going to level off. I think we'll hit our high temperature right after midnight and then again an average of about 35 to 40 for tomorrow's highs. But that's it. That's all we're going to see as far as the cold air. It gets a little bit warmer again as we wrap up November and we'll show you that coming up later, Stacy. Sounds good, Scott. We'll see you in a few minutes. A home in Northumberland County destroyed by flames tonight. These photos sent to us from a viewer show the place on Hester Drive near Watson Town full of flames. Investigators tell Newswatch 16 the owners escaped the house with the help of neighbors. One person had to be treated for breathing in too much smoke, but is expected to be OK. Also in Northumberland County, this suspect in a Thanksgiving Day shooting remains on the loose. Deshaun Coward of Pottsville is accused of shooting his girlfriend's stepfather in the leg several times. It happened in broad daylight here on Walnut Street in Culpmont. According to authorities here in Northumberland County, Coward may be armed and dangerous. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call Culpmont Police or 911. Strong reaction tonight at home and abroad following the deadly attack at a mosque in Egypt that killed more than 300 people. 
The leader of that place of worship who survived describing the moment of terror. ABC's Linda Lopez with his words and the latest on the investigation. So many graves, and there will be so many more for the over 300 victims, including 27 children, in the horrifying terrorist attack on an Egyptian mosque. The surviving imam who was conducting Friday prayers at the time of the assault, recounting the moment the slaughter began. <laughs> Saying, I heard what sounded like an explosion outside the mosque, and then some people came inside firing at all the worshippers. Survivors say at least two dozen militants carrying ISIS flags surrounded the mosque 125 miles northeast of Cairo, hurling explosives into the mosque and firing at everybody trying to escape through doors and windows. Then they stepped inside, shooting anybody who was still alive. Many victims said their final prayers during the carnage. They even shot at arriving ambulances. No group has claimed responsibility, but the Islamic State is suspected. Those worshipping may have followed a mystical form of Islam called Sufism, which ISIS considers heresy. Muslims in the U.S. condemning the attack. It connects back to the Texas shooting we had like recently. People who are worshipping, killing them doesn't make any point, and go, I feel really sad that it's still happening. And Egypt's military now retaliating. Their air force now striking militant hideouts and bases in the Sinai Peninsula. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. President Trump igniting controversy with his latest tweet ahead here at 11. What the president wrote that has Time Magazine firing back. But first, Scott's in the backyard. Yes, it is getting a little bit chillier now than we've saw, seen the last couple of hours. Some precipitation turning over. I suppose it's an occupational hazard that when we're on this late and you do the weather outside, it gets a little chilly. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, I, but I signed the agreement. <laughs> Kurt, made, <laughs> Kurt made me. I got to come out here no matter what. And it is, you know, for a no, late November day, it could be a whole lot worse. And it is calm down here. It is cloudy. But it's starting to get a little colder and it is snowing in parts of the viewing area now. But let's begin with how we, you, you saw that parade in Carbondale today. We, we talked about how nice it was, that flag football game at Avoca. Beautiful day. How about the sunset in Pottsville from Kaylee? Thanks to everybody that sent in these photos here at uh, WNEP Weather on our Facebook page and our Twitter feed as well. We appreciate it. Keep them coming. This was this morning. This is a beauty up here. And... Uh, yeah, I got to get the boss in here. Those of you that watched at 10 o'clock, I had to throw this in here. It, Ranger was in here, by the way, and it, so far, you know, he jumped up on this thing, but so far it looks like our set held its own. But uh, an active animal, that <laughs> for sure. But I want to thank Kurt for coming in here and helping me out, of course. It's always a pleasure to see him. And I'm glad that Allie's getting a break this weekend, too. I, I'm not replacing her. People have been asking me, how, when is she coming back? She's coming back next weekend. All right, a brief smack of winter coming in here tomorrow. That's going to make for a cold day, but will that be the coldest of the next 7 to 10? We'll show you. Will we get any help for the hunters? Would that mean a snowpack to track the deer? We'll talk about that and how nice it's going to be to finish November. Currently in the backyard, 44 degrees, four hundredths of an inch of rain fell earlier today. So that temperature slowly dropping, the wind slowly picking up, but still not too bad here. It is getting gusty out in Wellsboro and it's snowing there. 39, 46, Danville, 50 in Tower City and 39 in Mount Pocono and Forest City. Take a look at our hourly temperatures here. You're going to see this little dip. This is our high temperature here, by the way, uh, of the day coming up, I do believe. Tomorrow's high temperature will be right in about 15 minutes or so. Then it's going to slide down and then kick back up to about 40 degrees by tomorrow afternoon on average. Now here's where it's snowing. The light rain is gone. Tioga County getting some snow showers up here. And as we get close to morning, I would be careful with temperatures getting close to 32 degrees. We may have a few slick spots up here along Route 6 and some of the back roads in Tioga County, but still just a light rain or snow shower at worst during the overnight. And you're going to see as we go into tomorrow afternoon, it actually clears out. It's going to be a nice day going into Monday, though. Watch what happens here in the northern tier. Quick little shot of clouds and maybe a flurry, perhaps a little dusting up there Monday morning. But that's going to be our best chance. The rest of Monday looks gorgeous and uh, really, really going to be nice for uh, several days going into the end of this month. Tomorrow's temperatures across the northern tier into the uh, mid to upper 30s as we come down to the Valley Cities, averaging about 40 degrees for Dallas to Scranton. Into the Poconos, about 35 to 40 should cut it for the high temperatures there. And uh, the south, maybe getting into the lower 40s. We get most of these high temperatures again are going to happen in the next couple of minutes and it will not much of a rebound into the afternoon. And out west, temperatures getting around 40 to 42 degrees for the high. Down to 31 tomorrow night. Still breezy, I think, on Monday, too. Uh, looking at the latest data, high of about 48. 
Tuesday looks to be great though. A cold morning, but 55 and sunny for a gold nice afternoon on Tuesday. Wednesday looks good too, still into the 50s. It'll slide back into the 40s for Thursday, clouding up with our next chance of rain on Friday. And a look at the very latest data. It should clear out of here for the big game between Dunmore and Southern Columbia in Danville. Looks pretty good for that. Going into December, Stacy, it's going to warm up again as it looks right now. So Usually just a, it's frigid when you have football games this late in the season. Yeah, and let's hope that it is going to be pretty cold Friday night, but uh, it has not been a bad football season at all for the not schools. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. Thanks a lot, you Scott. You bet. Never mind the sleigh. Santa's using a more modern form of transportation these days. We'll show you where the man in red was headed in a helicopter next on Newswatch 16 at 10.